Hi there, my name is Andy Frost. I'm here with the Kitchen Table Project and Pete Gregg, one of the leaders of 24-7 Prayer. Pete, welcome. Thank you, nice to be with you. Can you just share for a minute, what do you do? What's your kind of average day like in ministry? It's, just, it's so varied. My, my older brother, who's a respectable lawyer, still when he sees me says, have you got a job yet? Yeah. Um, but I suppose my day is broken down between uh, my role with 24-7 prayer. We're in over half the nations on earth, so there's quite a bit of travel. Uh, local church, uh, Emmaus Road in Guildford, Woking and, and, and this region. And uh, then just being a dad. I mean, that's a, that's a big job. So we've got two sons. And uh, I was up till past midnight last right, night right, writing a, um, a UCAS form. Oh, well, the uh, joys. For, well, helping, helping my sons yeah. write a UCAS not, form. So. Yeah, I'm not faking yeah. it for him. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good. And Nick's got two, two boys. Um, kind of, can I give you a kind of snapshot. What is the, the, um, the Greg household like? Is that kind of calm, tranquil, prayerful place? You are a leader in prayer. Is that kind of what it's like? Or? Yeah, it's one of the most godly places you'll, so. yeah. you'll ever yeah. find. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I mean, Home is 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 reality, isn't yeah. it? It's it's where everyone lets down their their, their shield and, and and can relax. And uh, we 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 have got two dogs. Yeah. Uh, we almost always have people either living with us or with us at the meal table or whatever. And we've always loved that. And actually, one of the great enriching things in raising mm. our, 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 our sons has been that others have been part of that process. We've not sort of had this drawbridge and, you know, kind of used our diaries like a drawbridge to like say when people can come in when we're looking respectable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always been a bit of an open home. And that, that has been hard, but it's been overwhelmingly a positive. And so for your, your sons, I guess you want them to have a faith of their own as they've grown up. What have you kind of done to try and help encourage that sense of faith in your children's lives? I mean, the first thing is we have prayed with them throughout their lives very regularly. <laughs> good to hear. And, yeah, and, and, and prayer is very normal. I mean, there are the fixed prayer times, grace and, yeah. and, and, and you know, bedtime. But we, we would just pretty spontaneously pray little prayers about things throughout the day. And it's very moving now that our, our sons are much older. They'll often say, please, will you pray for me about well. this, that and the other. Um, we, we've um, always created a culture where it's possible to be honest and to ask okay. questions. We, we, got, we worked out early on, our job isn't to do God's PR for him. That's good. Because I think kids see through that. So like, you know, sometimes as you come away from church, it, it, if it had been a bit wacky, we won't try and cover, we'll go, what did what you happened? make of that? You know, or, or if someone had maybe shared something a little bit peculiar, we would, we would deliberately provoke a conversation. There was a key moment for me, I remember we came home one night and there'd been a tragedy outside the, our house. Um, an old lady had been knocked down and killed wow. in, uh, crossing the road. And I, I came home, the boys were in the house, they were unaware that outside there's flashing lights. And I remember walking in and thinking, do I hide this? Because my boys probably wouldn't have found out, could have put them to bed. And I realized now my job as a dad is actually not to protect them from the, the world's pain, yeah. but to help them to walk through it. So I very deliberately said, hey, put your coats on, you know, put your shoes on something's happened outside and I went and they stood and had to come to terms with the fact that a, a woman has just died outside our house and then that provoked an ability to have I think quite useful conversations uh, and to pray with them and I think our job isn't to build a you know a, a wall around the swimming pool it's to teach our kids to swim yeah and so having that conversation that evening I mean, how did you begin what did you begin to talk about what kind of questions came out of that kind of conversation it was essentially about open questions um, especially if, like me, you're a preacher and yeah. you tend to always be trying to give everyone the answers. <laughs> How did that make you feel? Why do you think that happened? Why do you think God let that happen? Yeah, big questions. Um, like I said, we're not trying to do God's PR for him. So give, give, give them the credit of being intelligent and give God the responsibility for helping to work that out and let them know it's okay to ask those questions. I guess on a very personal note, your wife Sammy's been been ill over the years. And yeah. How have you kind of helped your kids to work work through that? I guess and those questions that are there about God and healing and faith. I mean, how have you done that? Well, yes, Sammy's had a chronic illness really all our boys' lives, and um, at times it's been quite um, brutal in a way. Yeah. I mean, 
you know, go to bed one night and mum's there and the next morning she's not because she's in hospital and she's, she's been rushed in overnight. Or I remember one time she was there to pick them up from school and she had a seizure with all the other mums in the wow. playground and they came out. They used to call it mums having a, a milkshake was their phrase they used. And I think we, um, we did try to protect them as much as possible. I don't think that, you know, whilst their job is to teach them to swim, right? Yeah. I, I don't think you should be pushing them into the pool the whole time. So we did try and protect them somewhat. But um, and I think particularly we try to protect them from seeing the extremes of emotion in us because we sure. were aware they needed us to be reasonably stable and not too chaotic. Um, but... I think our boys are very comfortable with the fact that life is messy. It's good. And that, you know, God's not an algorithm locked away in Silicon Valley. You know, he, he's the one you process your questions with rather than the big fat answer on the wall, you know. And um, I, I think that often the, 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 the Bible is more honest than the church. Yeah. The church, we feel, especially as parents, that we've got to say, you know, our kids are on show and all that stuff. And it's just nonsense. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the Bible doesn't redact all those awkward questions, the doubt, the chaos from the text. Mm -hmm. And I think w good parenting is um, God helps us to be honest. God's yeah. not someone that we've got to continue to try and impress, yeah. and he's not someone that we've got to sort of try and impress others on his behalf. Yeah. And so in your, I guess in your home, there's a kind of sense of prayer throughout the kind of calendar of the year. In terms of actually kind of engaging them with Scripture and engaging them with the Bible, how do you help your kids, particularly at a younger age, begin to engage with the Bible and as they got older, the kind of the reality of the Bible, the messy bits that often we might not talk about so much in church? I'm not sure we've been very good at that, and it might be partly because... Um, I'm, a, I'm a preacher yeah. and we have very deliberately not forced our kids. Actually, I mean, they still both you know, come to church, but we've never made them actually. Yeah. Probably when they were little, we would just, but it's just, they choose to come. Yeah. And um, which I, I don't take for granted. Mm. I, 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 I will say this. One of the nice little things we realized was we needed to build a rhythm of prayer much more into our, our lives uh, as a family. And one of the things we let slip at one stage when they were very little was saying grace before mm. meals. And we realized that's crazy. This is a good a thing to do. And so we, we came up with this thing. It's really worked well. We have a, a landline phone still. We are that old fashioned. Wow. And um, what happens at the start of a meal is you spin the phone. Yeah. And whoever it points at gets two great privilege. And, and this inclu includes, as we often have guests, and they won't always be Christians, yeah, but they get two great privileges. The first one is uh, you get to say grace. Yeah. The second one is you get to ask a question of everyone at the table. Wow. And it can be anything, no holes barred. So over the years, we've had everything from what was the naughtiest thing you ever did, yeah. most embarrassing moment, to random things. I remember one of our sons, who's a complete dreamer, said, have you ever written a word on a piece of cheese and then eaten it <laughs> around the table? We all said no. Oh, no. It got yeah. to him. He said, yes, I have. You know? and, wow. and, and, um, and, and the joy of that is it's drawn our kids into conversation with guests. Mm. It's helped the guests to, to, to pray, even yeah, if yeah. they're not wow. believers. Yeah. And um, everyone's answers have been legitimate. It's often been very honest and, yeah. and great fun. And it means sometimes I've noticed kids can be just sitting slightly on the edge watching adult conversation. Yeah. That's, that's spinning the phone thing. Draws and I, I, quite a few of our friends do it now. We go to their house and I, oh, you spin the phone. So, <laughs> so that, that's, that's, that's been spin the phone. Really great. Spin wow. the phone, yeah. Wow. Or, or an equivalent. Okay. Anything, I guess, something you can spin. Um, so you talk about kind of praying with, with your kids, actually praying for your kids as well. I mean, I read your book recently, talks about actually how you've been praying intentionally for your kids. So I unpack some of that. And how do we pray for our kids? It's so difficult to know where to begin to pray, really. Yeah. I mean, I believe it's essential that we spend a bit of time listening to God yeah. on behalf of our kids. And I think many parents don't do this bit. So we pray reactively, God, keep them safe. Mm. You know, God, help them at school but we don't pray proactively, i.e., why did God make them? You know, yeah. the Bible says they were knit together in their mother's womb. Yeah. Elsewhere we read um, that God has prepared good works in advance for us to do. And so there's a calling 
upon your kids. And we as parents are only delegated responsibility of parenting mm. them, right? God is ultimately their father and mother. So it's a really good thing to do. Go to God and say, God, why did you make my sons, my daughters? What, what's your calling on their life? What's the unique giftings that you've given them? Mm. And I, I took a bit of time to do that. And, you know, I got my Bible open and, and I'd make this really simple. I just looked at lots of promises in the Bible mm. and I found the ones that just resonated with what I know of my own kids uh, and so on. And once I got two or three uh, promises that I really felt these are from God for my kids, those have become the backbone of my prayers for my kids. Because well. I think two things happen. First of all, if God's saying, I want to do this with, yeah. with, with, with you, um, it's going to be contested. Like it, say, say God's made uh, one of your kids very artistic and mm. creative and you, know, you sense a, 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 that's part of his calling on them. There's going to be all sorts of contesting around their creativity. So, so um, pray into that. And of course, just generally, they will, their lives will be contested. We have a, a, an enemy who's a liar and a thief. So, you know, you are going to have at times um, things that you, you're going to be discouraged. Yeah. You know, one of my friends had a word for his son that he, he would be in a particular kind of ministry, but when the son went through a whole season of drugs and backsliding, and he said it was only the fact I knew God had said something different, wow. and I refused to back off, and I kept praying, and eventually he came through that. Wow. So we need to hear from God for our kids, and then it's much more powerful to pray the promises of God into your kids' lives than, than try and make God say amen to the things that, that we want. And my prayers before I did that had been getting very vague. It was just kind of, please bless them and help them not to become not Satanists. Not at school. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of basic things. Yeah. And now in your home, um, you've got a kitchen table with this whole kind of project called the yeah, Kitchen Table Project. So explain kind of why it's important for you to have a, a kitchen table to a place where you do life together. Well, that's exactly it. It is where we do life together. And it's so easy, isn't it, to follow the trend of society where people don't actually sit around a table anymore. It is radical. I was with some friends who run an amazing discipleship program, residential, in America yeah. for creative people. Uh, and they said the two biggest bits of feedback they get at the end of this course every time from all these hyper-artistic creative people is... One, how radical they found it. They were only allowed to use the internet for an hour a day. Wow. And, and actually how positive, like the thing they thought would destroy their lives, by the end they weren't using the whole hour. And two was the radical nature of actually uh, sitting around a table to eat. So for Sammy and me, we, we, I had this extraordinary moment, Andy. Um, it's, it was my kitchen table moment. Yeah. Where I was um, up in the Outer Hebrides staying with a man called Donald McPhail, who was the great intercessor of the last great awakening mm. that we had in the British Isles, 1949, mm. 1953. He's a very old man at that stage. He subsequently died. And uh, at the end of this um, time with Donald McPhail, he said, I want to bless you. How can I pray for you? And I thought, oh, this is a real big, big moment. deal. You yeah, know? yeah. And, uh, and I said something, I didn't want to get it wrong, so I said, I'll pray that I become more like Jesus. And he laughed, he said, I'm not praying for that, that happens automatically. So I said a couple more really lame things. And then he said, let me tell you what I want to pray for you. He said, I'm going to pray that your ministry always flows, not from a platform, but from your kitchen table. Wow. And I remember at the time thinking, that's a bit weird. <laughs> and I came back and realized that's profound. Yeah. And so we got a kitchen table and I uh, spent several hours inscribing this Celtic knot into the very center of our kitchen table with the initials of our family members built into it. And I, and I said, for the rest of our lives, this is the center of the universe for us. Anything can be happening out in there in the world, but we will gather around this table and we will eat, we'll break wow. bread together, we'll be honest with one another, we'll laugh, we'll cry around this table. Yeah. And so I don't know where the center of the universe is for you, but for me, it is literally our kitchen table. And there's this cross at the center of this Celtic knot work. And, uh, and, and that has been an absolute key in our lives. Brilliant, brilliant. So you talk about the home there. And also running a church on the side. I mean, how then do you do you balance that with your kids getting involved in church or yeah. those kind of questions around how did you how did your kids find a role perhaps in the church to, to play their part? 
We yeah. always say there are two sons. One's like a fine wine, the other's like a hot chocolate. Okay. You know, one has got these unbelievable hidden depths, but he's very complex. Yeah. And the other one is just super sweet and everyone loves him and yeah. it's easy. And we often say, if both our kids were like the fine wine, yeah. we'd, 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 we'd be exhausted. If both of them were like the hot chocolate, we would think we'd nailed parenting if everyone would just do it Perfect. the way we do it. But actually, they are both, we love them dearly and equally, but they're so different. Yeah. And so one of our um, sons is, um, you know, the pleaser, yeah. and he, he, he does screens, you know, uh, at he church, out. and he's there with the his hands in the great. air, and he's, he's just off to do a thing with YWAM and all of that. And the other one is um, much more private, yeah. um, where, where, where the pleaser has sort of said, I don't mind you telling stories about me publicly. The other one said, um, I, I really feel like I need my space. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he's, you know, still at church, he's got just as real a faith, but he's much more sensitive. And it's been really important that we have honoured that with him and that we don't treat uh, him the way we treat mm. his brother. So I really encourage you to not have a single roadmap for your kids, good. but prayerfully and thoughtfully work out how can they prosper? How can church be a joyous place? Yeah a place of extended family, a place in which they flourish. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're called to make disciples of nations, but it has to begin with your own kids. Good. Like, go into all the world and teach them to obey. It, it's got to begin, teach your kids to obey everything mm. I've commanded. Mm. Baptize them in the name mm. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so mm. in a family. Mm. And so um, we have to attend to how can I make sure that church is a good place for my own kids and that has looked different for our different two seasons. sons yeah and and at different seasons yeah and then uh, i think when the kids were turning a certain age had a whole kind of rites of passage kind of thing yeah. um no i mean I, I i really believe it's very important to to to, to, to have rites of passage mm. um because in pre-industrial society, it was very normal. Yeah. And what's happened is probably since the 1950s, we've extended adolescence, mainly driven by marketing people, actually. <laughs> and so we have this weird state now where we have human beings who are physically mature, able to you know, have children and all that stuff, but emotionally, let's be honest, are nowhere near mature. And it's getting longer and longer. And so that, that period of adolescence is not easy. So we felt like... Well, we found out that our boys, before they entered their teenage years, yeah. were frightened. Yeah. They'd heard about how, you know, what adolescent people can be like. They'd seen the Kevin the Teenager sketches. <laughs> and, they, and literally one of them said to me, I don't want to become one. Wow. I don't want to fall out with you yeah. guys. You know, it was really moving. So we said, well, what would it look like to make the entrance into adolescence um, a really positive thing? A gift from God, mm. an opportunity rather than this big curse you've just mm. got to somehow survive as parents and as kids and so yeah what we did was um uh with both boys when they turned 13 i took them to do the three peaks great and um it was brilliant because we had to train so that was great preparation they had to raise money they're raising money for stuff um sammy and i prayed that god would give us a bible verse for each of them yeah. and we presented them with a bible verse at the end of doing the three peaks which is a massive physical mm. challenge mm. we had brilliant conversations you know climbing uh, you know going through the rain driving they got these bible verses at the end that both of them mm. wear around their necks to this day and actually wow. the three of us are about to have tattoos of our bible verses they've wow. got to come up with a bible verse for me now oh, brilliant uh, right Dangerous. now they keep coming up with jokes <laughs> but i'm trying to get them to give me a serious yeah. one and then um, they had to bring something that represented their childhood yeah. and bury it at the end of the three peaks. So one buried a cuddly blanket they yeah. had since he was a baby and the other buried a, a little soft toy called Rescue. Wow. And the funny thing was, as I watched them bury these toys, I thought this was a big moment for them. Mm -hmm. And I ended up in floods of tears saying things like, you have been such a great child. I've loved you. And they were there dry eyed, like, it's okay, dad, you'll be all right. I'm going to help you through my adolescence, you yeah. know? So it, it was profound. And now that it's a number of years on, it's interesting that that moment is still a bedrock in their own adult lives, like to the extent of getting them to two. So, yeah.
Brilliant. And then as they've got older now, as they've begun to leave home and things, how does that kind of change in how you are parenting for faith? I guess in the early years, you have a lot more, yeah. I guess, time with them, but how has it changed? You know, I always thought deep down, I think, that once your kids leave home, kind of it gets easier. And what mm. I didn't realize is you actually have to keep reinventing uh, parenting at every stage mm. of life, you know, mm. toddler, you know, young kids, adolescents, certainly when they leave home. And so uh, we, we're learning a great deal at this stage. Our son's right now 18 and 21. Um, one of the things we got wrong yeah. was um, when our oldest son went off to university first time, he came back for the summer. We were so excited to see him again. And we, we, we started, we just did everything we wanted to do. We wanted to do a particular restaurant we wanted to go to, a particular walk we wanted to do. And uh, he, he's become a, a vegetarian. So suddenly the whole family went vegetarian. And what we didn't realize was he became the center of gravity that summer for our whole family. It was difficult for his brother, even they love each other very much. And when we took him back to uni for the start of his second year, I thought my wife would be an absolute basket case. She came back and went, phew, that was exhausting. And what we realized is we had yeah, allowed him to become the centerpiece of the whole family. And so then last year on his summer holidays, we were very careful about, we are thrilled that you're back, but you're joining in with something. And so we've often got things wrong, but, but these have been really important times. And the joy of going to visit and sleep on his floor and, you know, in uni, and, and um, it's just a new level of friendship. And, and we've got such gifts now, haven't we, with WhatsApp, family yeah, groups, yeah. and all that stuff, with lots of jokes, and, and mostly at my expense. It's great fun. Brilliant. I guess then the final question would be then, um, if you could kind of summarize two or three kind of key ideas to help parents throughout that entire journey of passing on faith to their kids, what would be your two or three kind of, kind of final points to share with us? Firstly, um, realize that you're not trying to download faith to your kids, that you are on a journey together to become more like Jesus. So allow your kids to disciple you and they will probably let you disciple them. And, and I don't mean inappropriately, but it's, it's great. Like, for, here's an example. Uh, my wife's doing a counseling course mm. uh, at the moment. She went out for a couple of counseling sessions last uh, week, and I knew that she was then running Alpha afterwards. Mm. So our one remaining son at home, me, stood in the hallway, laid hands on Sammy, and prayed for her and blessed her as she went out to minister doing the, this counseling session and then running Alpha. That's very normal. Our mm. kids know they're part of sending me out when I go out to travel. It's mm. not like we're this thing on the side and dad's off doing, we're, sure. we're a team together. So journey together towards Jesus. Mm. Um, the second thing I'd say is be honest mm -hmm. uh, with them about um, life's difficulties. And, and as I said earlier, you know, don't try and protect them from life's pain, but help walk with them into it, knowing the presence of God and the love of God in spite sometimes of the mess. That's the second thing. And the third thing is have fun. You know, I, I've learned the hard way. Life is inevitably going to hurt. Sometimes it's going to hurt like hell. We want to protect our kids. We don't want that stuff, but it happens. Mm -hmm. Joy is not inevitable. Mm -hmm. Fun is not inevitable. Mm -hmm. And so it is your spiritual duty to pursue fun, to create moments of joy, yeah. because the other stuff is going to come and get you regardless. So celebrate well, laugh a lot, be present, enjoy life together as a family. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Pete. Really great to have you here. And thank you so much for your wisdom. Oh, it's a joy. And God bless you. Um, can I just pray for the people who are watching? Yeah, sure. Is that okay? Definitely. Let's, Definitely. let's just um, pray now because mm. this stuff isn't just a session. Mm. This is probably the deepest thing in any of our lives. I know I often feel more guilty about my parenting and I feel it's more important to me than anything else. It's, it's an area I so long to get right. And um, so let's just pray. Mm. Lord God, we thank you that you are the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth gets its name. We ask you that you would help us to parent our kids well. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen us where we often don't know what to do. Mm. You'd forgive us where we sometimes get it wrong. 
And we pray, Lord, that you would show us why you made our kids, what your calling is upon their lives, and how we prayerfully and practically can steward and grow those gifts within them. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.